As we talked earlier, the Genesis paint is quite thick when it comes out of the jar. The more you work it, it has that thick citropic quality that gets thinner, but sometimes it's not quite thin enough, and so you have some products available. Um, a couple of products available. One is the thinning medium, and this product you add to the Genesis paint and it makes it thinner so that you can do line work with it. I also like to use the Mona Lisa paint thinner to thin out the paint to do very, very fine uh, line work. So you can use the um, thinning medium or the Mona Lisa to thin your paint. What the thinning medium is also good for is if you want to go back and clean up an edge, you can take a clean brush, put it in the thin thinning medium, blot both sides, and then wipe away what you, what you don't want to have on your painting. Don't use the turp to do that or the, the paint thinner because it actually leaves a white um, hazy residue. So the thinning medium is, is great for cleanup. If you enjoy glazing, uh, putting that transparent layer of paint over your dried underpainting, there is a glazing gel. And what the glazing gel does is it takes any opaque color and turns it into a glaze. Um, traditional oil paints, if you tried to extend them too much, the binder just started to, to disintegrate and the paint would become grainy. You can actually take any Genesis paint and thin it so much with the glazing gel that you can just totally create that, that veil of paint that's so exciting in painting. The um, difference between the glazing gel and the thinning medium that you have to be aware of is that the thinning medium does not have drying ingredients in it, so you have to um, retain a 60% ratio of paint to the thinning medium. The glazing gel has drying ingredients in it, and so you can, you can use glazing gel straight with just a grain of paint in it. So this you don't have to worry about a ratio. The thinning medium, you have to worry about that ratio because it does not have drying ingredients. 60% paint in the thinning medium. The thick medium is a very interesting um, product. The thick medium is actually the Genesis paint without any pigment in it. And what you can do with this, let's say that you have a, um, a favorite color that Genesis doesn't make, maybe an iridescent color. You can actually take pure pigment and put it into the thick medium and make your own paint. So that's what the thick medium is great for. It's also great for maybe some impasto work if you want to have um, a very textural surface. So the thick medium, you can make your own paint or you can add um, layers, layers of texture. So that's what the different uh, mediums are for. Another question that uh, I frequently am asked is, how do you clean your brushes with the Genesis? Well, the best news is you don't have to clean your brushes. These are brushes that have paint in them for probably over a year, and all I have to do is wipe them and just start using them again. If you want to clean your brushes for long-term storage or you just like to, to keep um, your brushes nice and clean, you have um, several options. One option is the, the Genesis brush cleaner. It uh, does a fine job. Paint just drops right out. Cleans your brushes well. You can use the Mona Lisa paint thinner. This works well to clean your brushes. And if you want to use a very inexpensive product, you can just use um, dishwashing soap. Dishwashing soap is a degreaser and it just cleans your brushes so that you can store them or use them on your next project. Because um, the Genesis is a heat set paint, meaning to dry it, you go through a heat set process, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, it does bring up some uh, unique qualities that you have to be aware of when you're selecting your surface. You can use just about any uh, surface. I've tested the Genesis on MDF board, uh, TruePan, Masonite, um, Gessoed Masonite. It was developed for canvas, works great on fabric. Um, Genesis is permanently flexible, so it, it really works well on, uh, on fabric such as canvas or just fabric painting. Another um, place that you can use Genesis is on reborn dolls. The vinyl can withstand the heat and just works great with the Genesis. So you can use it on just about any surface that can withstand the heat. What you don't want to use it on is pine that has a lot of sap in it. What happens when you heat pine is that the sap just bubbles to the surface. But you can use it on most um, hardwoods such as alderwood, birch, um, basswood. Just avoid sappy pine. 
sap, sap from pine isn't going to eventually come to the surface, but when you heat it, it just, it just expedites the process. So that's probably the, the only surface that I would avoid with the Genesis. You know what kind of surfaces to use and what kind of surfaces to avoid, but what you put on top of your surface is very important. Um, Genesis makes a great gesso. This gesso comes in either black or white, and you can mix them together to get um, a darker or lighter shade of gray. So gesso or pre-gessoed canvas works great, even pre-gessoed pieces of masonite. Um, what you want to watch when you use the craft acrylics is that you use the DecoArt Americana. This is a true acrylic and some of the other acrylics are actually latex and when you heat a latex it could actually bubble. So those are the, the two recommended background grounds, either um, a gesso, black or white, or um, DecoArt Americana craft acrylic. The um, DecoArt uh, acrylic and the gesso both have a built-in sealer. What you want to avoid with the Genesis paint is putting a sealer underneath your acrylic. None of the on-the-market sealers work with the Genesis. What happens is if you heat any of the sealers, they will bubble up under the Genesis. The Genesis does not bubble up, but the sealer underneath does. Since the acrylics have a built-in sealer, do not use any kind of sealer. Um, the designs from the heart or any shellac based, um, the white lightning, those will all cause you problems. So avoid sealers. If you want to work on a stained background, the best thing to do is to seal your wood with either um, the salmon stain, which is an excellent water-based stain, or you can actually first seal your, your wood with um, final coat varnish, and we'll talk a little bit more about varnishes. So avoid any kind of sealer with Genesis because it, it does bubble up underneath the heat. Since the Genesis paint never dries, you get presented with the problem that you don't want to throw any of the paint away because you could use it again in a future project. This palette I've been using, I think, on and off for about three years. And as you can see, there's just a, a lot of different colors here. And what I do is I, I scrape it off and add more colors or add light colors together. And it, again, it's on a, on a glass palette, and so it will absolutely never dry. And I can just keep on using this palette and this paint over and over again for future for future projects. Another option for long-term storage are these little aluminum tins with glass lids. You can't use just any kind of plastic like those little plastics that have the flip lids. What happens is those bond with the Genesis and it, the Genesis actually will eat a hole through those little plastic um, containers. But the aluminum with the glass lid does not bond with the Genesis paint and so you can fill it with with your mixes like off of my palette or you could put um, just pure pigment in it and this is a great way to take just a little bit of paint to class or, or for an on the road class. So uh, these aluminum tins are great. They come in 10, 20, 40, even up to 80 in these little cases. So that's an option for the long-term storage, the glass or these little aluminum tins.